We do think the volatility is, is probably here to stay, at least for the, you know, the short term, call it next two to four weeks at minimum. I think beyond that, it's pretty hard to have, have any visibility. Um, you know, I think basically you could argue fine that the, that the Russian economy isn't that large in a global sense, but, you know, the price of oil is, is a global commodity, and that is a huge input into the global economy. And I think what you're seeing in Europe is, is the market pricing upside inflation risks and potential, you know, downside growth risks to the, to the surge in oil that we've had. And then in addition to that, you obviously have, you know, central bank policy and, you know, a geopolitical event that has a very long left tail that, that I don't think anybody can, can credibly have any, uh, any, you know, clear advantage on understanding. Yeah, and, and of course, the upside inflation risks, we had those in vision. It's the downside on growth that's really the concern, Stuart. How bad could it be? Yeah, look, I agree with you. I think inflation was was relatively well discounted, but I think the surge we've seen in oil probably has the potential to both raise the peak in inflation and push it a bit further out in the future. So the market is definitely dealing with that. You know, the growth impact, obviously, it's, it's going to depend on how high the price of oil gets and, and how persistent it is. But, you know, I think you could have a reasonably a reasonably solid impact on, on European GDP growth. And, you know, in the U.S. alone, we, we've taken our GDP assumptions for this year down 20 to 25 basis points. And, and the U.S. economy is kind of at arm's length, for, length from this as a, as a net exporter of petroleum products. So, you know, if we're down, call it 25 basis points um, on this move in oil, then you can imagine it would probably be multiples of that, um, what you might see in Europe. You know, we had Matt Winkler, our editor-in-chief emeritus, wrote a great opinion piece this morning pointing out that although we face this inflation risk, although consumer confidence is at lows, um, CEO confidence is still very high. Companies intend to invest still a lot in terms of CapEx. Hiring plans are the strongest that they've been in decades. Um, is that tailwind enough, you think, to carry us through the uncertainty of war, or do we get tripped up on this Ukraine issue? Uh, you know, look, I, th I think it's a definite positive that, you know, companies are still buying back shares and, and planning to invest in CapEx. And obviously, you know, earnings growth is probably going to decelerate later this year. But, you know, basically for the last six to eight quarters, you know, since the, the bottom of the pandemic, we've been posting very solid consent, you know, beats of consensus EPS in, in quarterly S&P estimates. So I think all that's a positive. Obviously, if you're going into a period of, of potential headwinds for demand, it, it's good to have a strong corporate sector that's, that's investing. So, I, look, it's, it's a positive, uh, particularly in the U.S., to help us get through this but you know big picture if you're if you're really going into a war type scenario you know certainly that's eventually going to impact corporate sentiment the same way it's going to impact consumer sentiment